Hi, I'm John Nelson. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to go over the cartographic steps to turn the map on the left into the map on the right. So, in ArcGIS Pro, I'm going to add an amazing database of historic iceberg locations. This is 26 years of iceberg locations, Antarctic icebergs. Over 330,000 points. It's amazing. I'll add a link to the data in the description below. But, I mean, you can see this. It's just this phenomenal archive of iceberg locations. So order of business number one is going to be getting this map out of the Mercator projection into something that's appropriate for the phenomena. And we are looking at Antarctic iceberg data, and so I'm choosing a South Pole orthographic projection. Orthographic means it kind of wraps off the face of the Earth, almost like you're looking at a sphere from the bottom. And now I'm going to add a Graticule layer. So I'm connecting to the Living Atlas, and I'm going to choose Firefly Grid Lines. Now Firefly Grid Lines are just this uh, kind of nice looking Graticule of different um, uh, bits of detail, and it's blue over water and golden over land. Um, and sometimes if you've got enough data and you've got the right backing data, um, that's plenty of context to serve as a base map. And you don't need like the default base map. Um, base maps are just there for context. And now I've turned my background into something darker, like a dark gray note. It's not black. A graphic designer once told me um, it's hard to go uh, any further than black, right? So avoid going full black, go almost black, just so your data can have a little bit more depth. Now I'm adding a global land boundaries data set that I've got that I'll also share with you. Because um, I want to have a little bit of a coastal stroke here to define the coast a little bit more. So I'm getting rid of the fill for now and I'm focusing on the stroke and I've chosen a cyan color. I'm going to kind of push this back a little bit to 50% transparency, make it a little bit thinner, it'll apply, and I like it. Looks pretty good. A little cyan boundary along the coastal areas, but really all I'm seeing now is just this tight convergence of all these lines of longitude um, converging at the South Pole. And so we'll bring back a fill, but instead of just a solid fill, I'm going to give it a gradient fill. And it's going to be a sneaky gradient, but uh, first let's just see what this gradient looks like. Right? I mean, it goes from green to white, um, but I'm going to give it a gradient of the background color, and I'm going to go from a background of fully transparent to a background of fully opaque. And what that's going to do for me is it's going to cover up the South Pole lines of convergence a little bit, right? So it just kind of pushes those things back. Um, but I see the zipper of uh, that, uh, oh, it's not the International Day Line, what is it? You know what I mean, right? So I've just dragged the fill on top of it and it goes away. Now I'm adding another layer, this time a global background layer. Now this is a total hack, but I use this layer all the time. Global background is just what you think it is, a big rectangle that covers the world. Um, but I'm using this, in this case, to kind of push back the visual prominence of the edge of the earth a little bit that happens with the stacking up of all those lines, those graticule lines. And so uh, I'm going to give it no fill, and I'm going to give this a really thick gradient stroke that goes from uh, one color to the other color. I'm going to choose the background color for both stops again. This time for the innermost color, I'm going to give it a fully transparent stroke, uh, a fully transparent color. And you'll note that I've given it an offset of half the line thickness. Now check this out, right? Before, after, before, after. You get a real sense of something that kind of looks touchable and tangible. Uh, it's enthingified, and it helps kind of promote the the visual priority of the phenomenon itself, which is icebergs. So speaking of which, I'm going to give these icebergs a graduated symbology. So that just means I'm going to scale them, you know, scale their size based on an attribute. And I'm going to choose actual size as the attribute. Now in UX design, that's called natural mapping. When the representative version kind of echoes its real life phenomenon, that's called natural mapping, not necessarily geographic mapping in this case. So. Uh, smaller points are going to look uh, are going to represent smaller icebergs, and larger points are going to represent larger icebergs. And let's symbolize these. I've got my firefly style loaded here, which um, you saw me add in a previous video. I can add a link to that as well. And let's see what they look like. So here is 26 years of firefly styled icebergs. So it's kind of glowing cyan. 
Uh, it's really kind of fun to watch this data stack up. I mean, that's a lot of points, a lot of data, a lot of iceberg history there. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know what? I mean, it looks cool, but there's so much overlap that's happening. I don't get a sense for a real uh, geographic frequency where there's clustering and stacking of uh, iceberg flows. And so I'm gonna get rid of Firefly. And in this case, I'm just gonna choose a simple point symbol and give it that same cyan color, but I'm gonna make it 99% transparent. Yes, 99% invisible. And let's see what happens when I hit apply. There is so much data falling on top of itself here that even though each point is only 1% opaque, you get this kind of beautiful visual stacking that happens. It's a really nice visual indication of frequency. And there you go. We turned this map into this map. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for following along. Um, please do not read this list of things that we just accidentally learned. And stay tuned for part two where I animate these suckers through time. Thank you very much.